This is the Hour of St. Francis, featuring Richard Basehart as Ensign Robert Baker, a man who found more than his voice when he talked to a statue. One foggy morning, I walk into this Navy hospital, which used to be one of the swellest beach resorts on the West Coast. After three months of throat doctors, clinics, selective therapy, massage, and gargles, I'm giving the medics their last chance. It's not much of a chance because I can't talk, and I know I never will. I'll never be able to speak a word or be a lawyer or go back to Scarsdale and marry Anne Marie. Well, there's a lot of deep blue Pacific where a man can lose himself after he's lost everything else. At the desk, I take out my pad of paper and my pen. I write, Ensign Robert Baker. I lost my voice in a plane accident. I hand the slip to the orderly, and he blinks at it. Oh, the dummy, eh? What they send you here for? The only space we got's in a room with a lieutenant who's batty. But he's harmless. Would you mind bunking with him till we get a room? Well, now what? Put me any place. All right, Ensign, you ask for it. Come this way. The only thing is, uh, this guy's a holy Joe. And here's your room. You get the bed by the window. Swell view of the Pacific. Now, hey, what are you pointing at? Oh, a statue with a nun. That belongs to the holy Joe. He calls it his sister, the little, uh, little flower, I think it is. But take my advice. Don't kid him about it. A fine pair of roommates we're going to make. A dummy and a nut. And the nuts are padre. I look at that statue again. I, I feel kind of embarrassed, like I'm buttoned in where I don't belong or something. I'm unpacking when this Joe comes in. When I see him, I get a real shock. He's, he's bigger than me. I'm six feet one. Must weigh close to 200. He's not handsome, but he... He's friendly looking. Hello. What are you doing here? Well, you want me to read this note? Ensign Robert Baker. I'm your roommate. Lost my voice in a plane accident. Well, Ensign Baker, I'm very glad to meet you. My name is Joe. It really isn't Joe. It's Father Tom, but everyone here calls me Joe. I'll introduce you to my little sister. Sister Teresa, this is Ensign Robert Baker. I'm going to call him Bob. He lost his voice in a plane accident. Bob, it's all right. She says it's all right. I'll pray that she'll drop a rose petal from heaven for your voice. If she sends you a rose petal, you'll be cured no matter what's wrong with you. Saved with a bell. That's the sweetest mess call I've heard since I joined the Navy. But I can't say anything to anybody, and that's that's lucky for me because I catch on fast that the fellas don't let anybody crack wise about Joe. The first Sunday I'm there, a Navy bus pulls up at the front door and a shipload jumps overboard. They grab Joe, and he hauls me along. We wind up taking over half the beach. While Joe's refereeing boxing matches, pitching softball, and generally running the show, one of the enlisted men sets me straight about it. Joe was chaplain on our cruiser the time we spearheaded one of the first Guadalcanal attacks. We took a couple of direct hits. Joe worked on the deck all day and straight through the night, sorting out bodies, helping fellows die, carting our wounded below. Then a hit exploded right on top of him and blew him 50 feet. He's been like this ever since. NP, the medics call it, neuropsychosis, something there's no medicine to cure. All I know is every time our cruiser hits San Francisco, the boys charter a bus and beat it down here to see Joe. He may be in Peter the medics, but he's okay with us. When the bus finally rolls away, Joe looks dragged out. When he gets back to the room, he doesn't talk to the statue. He just kneels in front of it. I guess he knows he hasn't got all his buttons, but I feel sorry for him. Yeah, but I've got troubles of my own. I can't even talk to a statue. The next morning, I got more troubles. Joe finishes a long, low conversation with his little sister, and then he jumps at me. Bob, she says I should teach you to talk. If she says I should teach you, you're going to learn for sure. That's great, isn't it? Uh, 
Padre. All I want is to be let alone. I can't talk and I never will. Bob, that isn't right. My sister told me to teach you. Let's start now. What are you writing? Definitely no. Bob, listen. I have to get away from this nut. How balmy can you get? I spent three months making funny noises in the best clinics in the country, and a baddie padre is going to teach me to talk in one easy lesson. The next morning, it would have to be my turn to go on guard duty, which means following the padre around all day to see that he doesn't get hurt if he strays off the property. He gets up at six and dresses in his khakis. I trail out of the hospital after him, into the fog. He heads straight down the avenue to a church. It's one of those old California missions. He rings the front doorbell, and a big padre with a red face opens the door. Good morning, Monsignor. Ah, good morning, Father. A beautiful day it's going to be. Uh, this morning, Monsignor? No, son, I told you that the day Almighty God let you say Mass again, I'll be shouting it from the housetops. <laughs> come on in, lad. I have a pot of coffee on the stove waiting for you. Oh, you come in too, boy. Monsignor, this is Bob. He can't talk, but my little sister and I are going to teach him. Good morning, Bob. Uh, Father, you go ahead into the kitchen. Bob, it's a shame. A fine lad like him. He comes here every morning at exactly seven, hoping to say mass. And every morning... I have to tell him the same thing. Well, I remember how my grandmother used to say that the best cure for your own misery is to try and help somebody else out of theirs. So the next morning, Joe and I start our lessons. I know it won't work, but I do it to please Joe. I like the guy. I sprawl in the easy chair and he sits on the floor. Bob will learn the way babies do. A baby couldn't say Massachusetts, so we'll start with baby words. I'll say them first, and then you try. Mama. Mama. Mm. Mm. Mama. Mm. Mm. Ma. You can say Mama and Dad are just fine, Bob, and we've only been working three weeks. Now, let's take a hard one. Ba, ba, black sheep. Ba, ba, black sheep. Ba, ba, black sheep. I get stuck so long on that one that it, when I finally get it, we use it as a kind of a password. Ba, ba, black sheep. Well, it means good morning, good night, uh, anything you want it to mean. The next word we tackle is please. One morning, I'm in my easy chair, Joe's on the floor, Long legs stretched out. Take it again, Bob. Please. 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 That's great. You're getting it. Now, once more. Pa, please. Pa, please. Lieutenant Martin and Ensign Baker, this is Captain Seward from Washington. He's inspecting hospital facilities. Oh, Lieutenant Joe, stand up, please. Commander Wilson, is this the NP case? Yes, Captain Seward, but he's absolutely harmless. And he does something for the morale here. It's entirely contrary to regulations. I can't imagine how he got here in the first place. Have you ever met my little sister? Sister Teresa, these are Navy men. We must pray for them. We must ask a rose petal for them. Commander, we have mental institutions where this man can receive treatment. Sir, if you take him away from here, it'll do him tremendous harm. And not only him, but everyone else. He makes the boys forget their own troubles. Won't you let him stay here doing his job, saying his little prayers? I don't think that's possible, Commander. But, please. What is it, Ensign? That's one of the half dozen words the Ensign can pronounce. The Padre spends four to five hours a day teaching him to talk. What the Ensign wants to say, Captain, is that he'll take care of Joe. He'll watch him like a hawk. Uh, uh, Commander, I'll give you my final word tomorrow. I know what that word's going to be. That night, I can't sleep. I lay there listening to Joe's deep breathing. I look over at the statue. 
And all of a sudden, I get up. I go over and plunk down on my knees in front of Joe's little sister. I try to pray, but all I can think of is, now I lay me down to sleep. And my knees begin to hurt, so I get up and sit in the easy chair. I keep staring at the statue. And then Joe's little sister seems to get bigger and bigger. Or maybe I'm getting smaller and smaller. She talks to me. Good evening, Ensign. You can speak without your voice, and I can hear you very well. It'll kill him, little sister, if they take him away. Why did you go down on your knees tonight? Well, I... I seen Joe praying for everybody in the hospital, and... Well, maybe I figured somebody ought to pray for him. He has prayed for you. I know. And I have listened to both prayers. From our father, I have permission to give his help to one of you. Which one should it be? There's no difficulty about that. It's Joe. You forget, Ensign. He has prayed for you. Is your prayer better than his? Uh, I didn't mean it that way. I... I'm sorry. I will cure you, my friend. And you will help my brother. Hey! Hey, don't go! Wait a minute! Hey! I'm sitting straight up in the easy chair, talking to a little statue. I'm talking. Ma, ma. Ba, ba, black sheep. Now I lay me... Roger! I sneak out the door quiet but fast. I walk down the corridor to Commander Wilson's room. Come in. Commander Wilson? Ensign, you're talking. You're telling me, sir. Joe and his little sister? Yes, sir. Joe and his little sister. Ensign, we're going to see Captain Seward right now. Bye bye, Black Sheep, sir. A week later, I start off on 30 days' leave before I return to active duty. It's not much leave, but it'll give me time enough to get to Scarsdale and to Anne Marie. The last morning at the hospital, before I leave to catch the 6.30 bus, I take a final look out of the window. I see Joe walking down the avenue in the fog. He'll be attached to the hospital as long as he wants to stay. A sleepy Ensign is trailing after him. Joe's on his way to the church to ask Monsignor... Something gets in my eyes, and it isn't fog. This episode of the Hour of St. Francis, entitled Baba Black Sheep, featured Richard Basehart as Ensign Robert Baker and was adapted for radio by Juanita Vaughan from a story by the Reverend Stephen Early, S.J. The cast included Dan O'Hurley, Jack Moyles, Virginia Gregg, Bob Bruce, and Hal Gerard. Sound effects by Art Fulton, with music by Gaylord Carter. This program was produced and directed by Father Kenneth, and was brought to you by the Third Order of St. Francis, whose members pray with St. Francis, O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. For a copy of this program, Ba Ba Black Sheep, or the Peace Prayer of St. Francis, write to the Hour of St. Francis in care of this station.